Hello everyone, my name is Klaus Andersen and I'm Sales Director in Vilofos. Welcome to today's webinar concerning the challenge of high protein prices for cattle feed and how to reduce the feed costs nevertheless. Today's presentation will be given by my colleagues Camilla Steno and Nils Moritz. Camilla is Purchase Manager at Vilofos and has worked with the field for nearly 20 years. Nils is head of Vilofos Germany's cattle uh, department and has a background as master in agricultural science. During the webinar, it's possible for you to ask questions in the chat and after the presentation, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. The session will be recorded and will be sent to you afterwards together with the presentation. And this was a short introduction from my side. Again, welcome. And then the word is yours, Camilla, please. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you for uh, letting me join and speak to this um, seminar. Um, first of all, I like to just um, give a short presentation of, of the feet. Um, we're talking about uh, how to feed uh, the vo world's population. So when we look about uh, the prices from a raw material point of, of view, we're looking into all the whys the prices are volatile in the raw material market. So um, a few points that we would talk about today will be more people in the world to feed. We'll have increasing living stand standard, meaning that even the third world will also start to eat uh, meat instead of eating uh, vegetable, chicken. They will go for higher end meat uh, consumption. We'll look into growth in economy, which means that uh, people become more wealthy. What do they spend their money on? Will they go into speculation, into the stock market and those kind of things? And then finally, we would look uh, a little bit more into supply and demand what is available production wise and what is needed in order to feed the world population. And at that end, uh, we will come to why the raw materials move up and down uh, depending on all these factors. So if we look at one of the main drivers in this protein market, uh, everybody knows a little bit of soya, but what is soya in general? Soya is the main um, driver uh, it's the biggest raw material on the world market and it's setting the prices ups and down for all the other smaller proteins like rapeseed proteins from dairy and other proteins that are used within uh, the consumption of food or feed on the world market. So everybody knows a little bit about soya, but at the end of the day, um, price are reflecting um, what is needed. Um, what is uh, available, you know, the yield uh, from the harvest, what um, what would the US dollar and speculation do on the market? And then finally, one of the biggest driver into the soya market is, of course, what is China going to do? China is the biggest um, consumer of soya and the biggest importer of soya protein in general. They take more than nearly one third of the world consumption the production of soya. That's how big uh, China is. So that's why people always uh, look into and say, OK, what is China going to do uh, for the next season? Um, will their consumption increase? Will it decrease? Looking a little bit more into that, we can see the world production on soya is nearly close to 400 uh, million tons. And the consumption on the world market is also nearly 400 um, uh, million tons. You can see it comes a little bit from different, but uh, mainly China, USA, Argentina, Brazil, and a little bit of others, as we say. If we look a little bit why China is, is importing, it's because they need to feed, but also you can see consumption still increasing and what they're importing and the difference between consumption and import is what they have also on uh, available on the home market. But with the bigger population, with the wealth, uh, we will see the coming years 
um, bigger consumption of soya in general. It leaves us to alternative protein. How do we feed the world uh, with, and can we have enough of protein available in the market? And what does it mean? What types of proteins are we looking into the feed? And um, what kind of um, sustainability in the source are we looking for? And this has an impact on how we will in the future um, feed in an innovative way uh, our animal. And this, of course, would lead to change, um, you know, supplement replacement into different uh, protein sources. And uh, today, if we look at the world market and the expectations and the reports that has been made, is that we are going to uh, go through a time where we say, uh, there is not enough protein available sources in order to feed the world. And from our side, in terms of how to meet this and also uh, feed and source the right uh, uh, soya protein or protein in general, we're looking in to see on the additive side how we can support the animal by reducing uh, the consumption of soya uh, protein or protein in general. Um, from my side, um, I don't have a lot because um, protein is a difficult and we want to um, source it in a sustainable way. And for us, it's not an alternative to, uh, to increase uh, soya in general. Um, so we need to look into a much more uh, sustainable protein source. And um, this is what we see in the future coming much more newer company that innovates in, in, in greener protein sources. Said that, I would like to give um, or introduce uh, my colleague, Nils Moitz, um, the nutritionist, who will be able to explain you a little bit more in details of why um, uh, this has an impact on the diet in general. So um, for now, I would like to say thank you very much and pass the words on to Nils. Thank you for giving me the word, Camilla, and thanks to everyone for joining this uh, webinar. We uh, will now talk a bit about how to feed dairy cows um, in terms of protein feed. And what we heard before, it's about price and availability. And of course, what most of us know, it's about crude protein supply. So what is the right level? There is a lot of discussion within the science and um, a long history. and. Uh, Third is sustainability, how to reduce nitrogen emissions, because this is this is a topic we see is also rising. And overall, the question, what is the right level of protein supply for our dairy cows? So what we hear from the market is this. A rising volatility and therefore as a farmer, you need to react to be competitive with your production. And then I go now through some slides where I show a wider motivation. So for example, if you look at the Danish situation, there's a lot of things going on about the reduction of pneumonia. So there's a second pressure on the farms besides the market that is from governmental rules to reduce the emissions on farm side. And that's the same what we see here from Germany. And um, it's about this what we emitted in 2005. And this means that we have to reduce by 29% our emissions up to 2030. So for this value. And this is a big goal. If you look at the emissions itself and uh, what you see here this is the cattle side so for the cattle it's nearly a stable 
amount of emissions. And this leads me to this kind of science meta-analysis where you can see that crude protein manipulation in the feed in general leads to less nitrogen emissions and this means for pigs and also for cattle and if you look at the cattle then it's even a better rate of um, reducing nitrogen emissions by feeding less crude protein so that's really interesting and a last slide for the motivation of our side is this this is from the Netherlands beginning of the year and you see that there's a lot of discussion going on about better use of protein sources within the rumen and this leads directly to our idea about the supply so again what is the right level of protein supply and where, where maybe are the limits and everything starts in the rumen so let's see the rumen as a key factor this kind of ecosystem where you have a lot of inhabitants that work for the cow to feed her in the right way and there's one thing i would like to highlight and this is this, this You have on one hand the pneumonia that is going out into the bloodstream and you have on the other hand the saliva is a buffer substance and with the saliva there comes urea back into the system so by chewing the cow gives back some urea into the system to have good nitrogen for the microbes and this is a system that maybe works really well if you have a cow that is going to pasture, that is feeding not that much, that is bringing not that much performance. But if you think of a really high performing animal, this is a cycle that is maybe a bit ineffective and that makes also make makes some problems if it comes to the use of energy and so on because it has to cycle it through the blood and then again back and that's where we start with our idea so in the rumen we have the breakdown of the protein and it goes directly from the protein to the peptides to the amino acids and from that we have a kind of bacteria that produce the pneumonia that is recycled and is going to the bloodstream and if we could make a cut here then we would have more amino acids that go into the duodenum and that's what this figure shows there have been many trials on essential oils on influencing the rumen in this case so the idea is producing less of this and enhancing more to this stream into intestinal digestion and there comes our player into the place, Protispa, and this is a patented combination of essential oils. And this essential oils reduce the breakdown of amino acids on the rumen side by the hyperammonia producing bacteria strains into pneumonia. And the best and the important thing is because we would like to keep the performance of the cow is that there is no interference of the production of volatile fatty acids. So we have this situation and we would like to reduce this and we will see more at the intestinal side. So what is it about protein bar? As I said before, it's a combination of essential oils. And they are carefully selected for their synergetic effect. And that means we have the effect of, on the hyperammonia producer and the, on the overall production of ammonia in the rumen. And we have no effect on the production of acetic acid and propionic acid that are responsible for our milk yield. And this 
kind of essential oil mixture is put onto a carrier that you can put it into the feed and it's coated for stability because we all know essential oils are fluid and in this kind of coating it's possible to store it for a long time without losing the effect and it's possible to put it in all kind of feeds even if you would like to feed pelleted feed stuff and how do we know it works so this is really some story some years ago and shows that we have some experience with the product on farm level and it's about 10 farms in the netherlands where they all reduced their protein feed by about 500 grams and what we saw is that overall the milk yield for the control was less and for the protein bar group was more and the same for the milk fat and what we saw was a bit less for the milk protein but what, what um, they also did they looked at the payment from the dairies for the for the farmers and there you can see overall every farmer earned a bit more by using protein bar and this is what you see so they gained more income over feed costs by using the product and reducing their protein feed and that's what it's all about when you look at the beginning you have to be more competitive and that's why if you have something new in it has to gain the money to use it by itself so this is the idea if you basically invest about five euro cents per cow and day and uh, you have a price for soy around here this is just an example and uh, you have some savings by using less of it through protein bar then you save in this case about 20 euro cents per cow and day and now let's think about uh, the emission side because this is also something that drives us so if you sa save 0 0.5 kg of soybean meal we save about 200 grams crude protein per cow and day and that's about more than 30 grams of nitrogen per cow and day and about 12 kg of nitrogen per cow and year and this means on other hands if you feed 100 cows at your farm you save 6.5 hectares of land use for the production of the protein feed or in other words this is seven per seven percent of land use for that is free for a different production so what would a typical diet look like with a protein bar this is the ration that is also fed under con trial conditions so we know really well um, the outcome of this and you see we added the protein bar as a farm pack and you see we have the rapeseed meal here for the control with 3.5 kg and for the protein bar group is 2.5 kg and there's a bit of balancing by the grain mix because the grain mix contained a bit of peas so there is a bit of protein there and that leads here for the crude protein 15.5 percent for the control and 14.7 percent for the protein sparation and this trial was done in the south of Germany by um, by a, a trial farm um, Auendorf in Baden-Württemberg and it's with a crossover design so every cow after an adaption phase went either in the control or in the trial group then after an adoption phase again crossover the cow that went from the control into the trial, trial group and vice versa so every cow has been in every group and therefore the the, um, the finding about the performance is really good documented 
And what we saw is that for both diets, we found the same milk yield with nearly the same fat content and also with the milk protein on the same level. And what you see for the protein bar group is that you have less milk urea. So this is, I think, a clear effect from the cycle um, we talked about earlier for the rumen to be more efficient. So that's it. It's documented. It's published by the beginning of this year from uh, from a German um, authority. And um, that's why we can also give you the trial report to more information. So now if you would like to say, I would like to have a drive with Protish Bar, you can get Protish Bar through a premix to mix it into a concentrate feed or a pelleted feed. You can also buy a mineral feed which includes Protish Bar and mix it directly into TMR. And if you have all that and you just would like to try it, then we have a farm pack, which is also a possible way of including it into the TMR. So we have different options, but the same incorporation rate into your diet. So it's just one incorporation rate and one dosage. So uh, what did we learn at VeloFoss from this experience with this product? We have um, crude protein reduction in, in our dairy cows diets is possible. And um, with a reduced level of crude protein, we can also decrease nitrogen emissions. And by the use of protein bar, we make this crude protein reduction possible without negative effects on our, the performance of our dairy cows. And um, so that's for a start to give you a first impression. And, and now I'm ready for your questions. Okay, Camilla and uh, Nils. Thanks for your words. Thanks for your presentation. Um, I have already some questions in the chat. Nice to see. Is you the first man on the on the scene, Nils? The you first man on the scene. I will. I will. Should I ask you or Camilla or we just say? I think I. I will start from the top. Camilla, what is your expectation to raw material price in the near future? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, what we've seen also with the COVID-19, uh, we don't believe that raw material is going to be any uh, different. It's not going to be easier. Uh, we think it's going to be even more difficult not only just from supply and demand, but also from the whole uh, perspective of speculation. We see more and more investing funds going into raw material, have an interest because everybody needs to make more in order to retire from pension earlier. And that means uh, they will invest and look into alternative markets besides stock market in general. Yes. Will raw materials still be impacted by COVID-19 in 22? Yeah, as you know, um, we had a lot of uh, on the supply chain side of uh, getting the raw material in due time. And we've also seen some um, pro problems from the shipping company to supply uh, container enough from the different uh, ports. But um, we think, <laughs> let's say, we don't know what COVID-19 uh, is going to offer us in the future, but we do believe uh, we all need to be vaccinated. And what does it mean? So eventually the world needs to shut down for a period to everybody's vaccine and then we drive up again. So there will be much more volatile in terms of ups and down of the supply chain, which means uh, either you need to stock a little bit more or um, we hope the supply chain in general from the shipping companies will uh, make a different flow for the uh, cargo to move around the world. 
So from our side, at least uh, supply chain is going to be crucial in order to move um, the goods in the future, including um, the COVID-19 um, yeah. case. Yeah. Case, yeah. Okay, Camilla, thank you. Uh, this one is for you, Nils. Do I need an adaption phase if I would like to start feeding Porchis bar? Yes, I would uh, recommend an adaption phase because um, um, you come from a higher level and we looked at the rumen, so population will shift and that takes some time. So I would like to see two weeks of adaption phase by lowering the level from the protein from the upper to the lower level and feeding protein bar for this time. And after this, you can expect then the effect. OK, one more for you, Nils. Can it be used with urea in the diet? Yes, that's a good option because urea is a um, quick nitrogen source that you put into your rumen, so it will be broken down really quick. And if you then have less bacteria that break it down to pneumonia, it's a positive thing. Yes, and one more for you, Nils. Was the, the result significant in the test of Portis bar or only numerical? No, um, in the test of the Auerndorf trial, it was significant, yes, with a crossover design. Yes. What would be your expectation in terms of feeding strategies if Protis bar is combined with a prebiotic capable of increasing micro, microbial protein synthesized from better use of forage in the diet? Yeah, that's a really nice question. Thank you for that. And it's, yeah, I think it's really positive in this way because if you have more energy from forage, and you have more protein within the rumen, then I would expect an even stronger effect on that. And as we see a lot of diet that maybe have some slow ruminating forest, it's really good to have that. Yeah, so a combination would be a good thing. Yeah, what is the difference between amino acids inclusion and essential oil inclusion oh that i don't understand really right this question i try again what is the difference between amino acid inclusion and essential oil inclusion and then it also uh, asking what is quantity of cp reduction can be done so maybe if you think so First of all, we have one inclusion rate of protein bar into the diet, so we don't play with this. And for the crude protein level, we have this simple thing saying 0 0.5 kg of soil extraction short, sorry, <laughs> soil extrudate would be um, the best option. And from that on, you can calculate into your system. That's why we present it here in this way because if we go on into different systems it would be really complicated but if you send this question in again we can answer in your system what would be the inclusion rate and what be, would be the expected reduction of crude protein how does protein power works in the rumen yeah um, as i showed it's about uh, a shift of the rumen population so there's a kind of um, essential oils that inhibit the population of some kind of the bacteria to grow. And the mode of action is that it's not general antibiotic, it's just targeting the hyperammonia producer. Yes, and one more question for you, Nils. Energy or protein, which is most limiting in ration? <laughs> so this, I think if I, I understand it right, um, this depends on your ration, of course. Both can be limiting. 
And uh, what we see from the, the past maybe is that we tend to provide more protein to be sure that we have the right protein level. But that is a question from what level you come from and where you would like to go, because it's you can go step by step down from, from an upper level of protein. That's what we see if we look at different rations. Yes. That was, in fact, the last question. You're more than welcome to, to ask more questions in the chat. We still have time for it. Uh, and we will wait, at least give it uh, one, one minute uh, before rounding off the meeting. The experience tell us that uh, sometimes we receive more questions in the end so so feel free to ask either camilla about the raw material markets and prices and expectations or nils regarding protein feeding and uh, with focus on on protein bar in this case here In the meantime, I can tell you that uh, for a longer period, we have had these uh, webinars every second week with uh, many people watching, and we are happy about that. So we will continue also in the future. So in two weeks again, we will have the next uh, webinar. And the topic is uh, the harmful effects of ammonia in the barn and how to reduce it. And that would uh, be a webinar focusing for both species, uh, cattle and, uh, and pigs. Again, 10.30 Central European time, and it would be the 17th of, of June. And uh, we had, in fact, fantastic. We had more questions here. Let me see. The first one is asking: Can be the can be the the impact of protein bar in a formulation program, or how you do that? Uh, yeah, that's how it's written, else do you understand it? Your mic, uh, Nils. Like this, okay. Um, will you please repeat? Can be the can be the impact of Protis bar in a formulation program, or how do you do that? I'm yeah. not. Yeah, yes, you, I understand oh, it. Yes. So, for um, for Germany, and uh, we have worked in the last years, as I showed you, with reducing the level of that 0 0.5 kg, and this is more simple. But in the future, we are working on in implementing it with matrix values into the diet calculation program. So this will come up within this year. And uh, you can imagine that it's difficult to have it in different systems. And that's what makes it so complicated. But um, we are on it because, of course, this is interesting to put it more, um, more, um, yeah, more, more efficient and more um, directly into uh, the diet. Yeah, but we have really good experience with the way I introduced it now. Yes, good. What was the dosage of Portis bar per cow in TMR feeding? Yeah, it's um, if you have the um, if you have the premix, it's 20 grams per cow and day. Yeah. Is the effect of Portis bar depending on the protein source included in the diet? Oh, yeah, of course, it's um, it's depending on the on the um, on the level of crude protein that is within the protein feed, and that's where you have to look at, of course. So 
you have to contact your your advisor from Veloforce uh, to find out the right way of feeding. Um, but um, I was showing one example and then the story with the 500 grams because otherwise maybe it's too confusing from one system to the other. So, yes. Uh, what were the, I'm not sure if I pronounce that right, Mon, Mon percentage in the German trial? Uh, well, um, we can have a look uh, what that means and then I will write yeah. it. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah you, we will so send we'll it. get a written answer of this. Exactly, yes. exactly. And then it's for Camilla. I'm from India. Today, prices of all cake, oil cakes are very high, and in general, 30 to 35 percent inclusion in compound feed is there. How much reduction of protein can be done? Protein sources are mostly. MOC and so I, no, it it's it should be for you as well, uh, Nils. Do you understand it? Can you repeat, please? Uh, today, prices of oil cakes are very high, and in general, 30 to 35 percent inclusion in compound feed. How much reduction of protein can be done? Uh, protein sources are mostly MOC and soya. So I can say that you can reduce it, but um, I would like to write it down in a in a proper way to show the reduction. I think that is uh, the best answer for you, but I think there's a reduction possible. Yes. Yeah, we will come back on that. In your switchback design, what were the days in milk criteria for the cows uh, in your design? I have to look that. For I don't know. Legible in your design. Yeah, you will also have a look yeah. at that. So yeah. the days in milk, it's yeah, it's documented. Yeah. yeah. OK, thank you very much. Many interesting and, and good questions to go a little bit deeper into some areas of the topics. Um, do we have just at the end, maybe one or two more? We have space for that. Maybe it's not the case. OK, then I think it's time to rounding off the meeting. Uh, it's really our hope that this seminar uh, or webinar has uh, contributed with some insight, given some inspiration and, and ideas uh, to all of you. And as said uh, earlier, more seminars will come. So uh, please uh, have a look on our website or social media platforms where you in a in a short time can register for the the next uh, webinar and get access so again to all of you participating thank you very much uh, have a nice day and uh, goodbye from our side